if a, you know. if all of the average size farms and there's a it's a very tough thing to say average because sure. it's you know I, I'd say I'd say full time farmers mm-hmm. you know whether that's five hundred to that five hundred acres to two thousand acres there's a lot of the a lot of our customer base a lot of our people guys I know they're in that range now. That is not to negate a 200 acre farm. Sure. It's just where are you at in the growth of your operation? Maybe you don't want to be bigger than that. Yeah. You know, um, I'm actually at a point where I'm downsizing my operation just a little bit so that I can be more attentive in other areas that I know I'm lacking in. Sure. But, I mean, the United States is still largely farmed mm-hmm. by, you know, the family farm. Yeah. Majority, actually. Yeah. And so if you took all those farms, today and said tomorrow you are shifting to 100 percent organic the world would starve yeah it would literally starve it would collapse because we could not shift fast enough and efficiently enough to keep the supply chain moving right and so you know it's now is there a lot of are there a lot of people that are looking for better alternatives to raising food there's cover crops being right on you know, there's improved soil health. There's things that we're doing that are seeing, you know, decreased negative uh, applications on soil, improved fruit quality, you know, better, you know, higher protein in wheat, higher, uh, uh, you know, longer shelf life of tomatoes, things of that nature in a more natural stance. Right. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't, I, you know, the word tree hugger gets thrown around or, you know, <laughs> greeny or whatever it might be but you start looking at the science behind food and food quality and it's absolutely fascinating i wish farmers would really start diving into the science behind the growth i mean the row crop farmers will have a ton to learn from the vegetable farmers Mm -hmm. i listen to some vegetable podcasts vegetable production podcasts yeah dude those guys are so in tuned to what makes a peach or a tomato, you know, things of that nature. And it is, it's like just improving one nutrient can raise the shelf life of that fruit by five days. Are you familiar with, um, the crops of three sisters crops? You know what I'm talking about? I'm not. So like, uh, East coast, U S, um, Iroquois, Cherokee, right. They have the three sisters and it's corn, it's squash and it's beans. And they would plant them at the same time Mm -hmm. and they would do corn surrounded by beans with squash interspersed between them, right? With the pumpkins, whatever, you know, squash, loose term. Like a multi-species. Because of the benefits from one to the other and what they did for one another. So, you know, technology changes, things change. It's not a perfect world. You're not going to go farm thousands of acres of corn, beans, and squash all intermixed in the sure. same. There's zero efficiency there, right? right. You know, we're not a hunter-gatherer society, weirdly enough, you know? Right. So, but um, what can you take from that? Mm. And this is what I think I see, please correct me, is like doing these natural products using the humix and the fulvix and things like that to start mimicking those same types of soil beneficial relationships within the soil biome itself Yeah, that you would get by doing something naturally that's completely inefficient and non-viable from any type of a commercial standpoint. Mm-hmm. But how do you mimic those same soil traits with natural additives or, you know, things like that. So yeah. th- those are the cool things that I'm excited to continue to learn about and, and see how it goes. You know? Yeah. Well, and the, the whole, there's a big homesteading movement right now. Mm-hmm. Very big. Um, and dude, I think it's super cool. Mm-hmm. I really do. I think people should be re- less reliant on, I mean, let's just say grocery stores. Sure. You know, now listen, there's a grocery store owner listening to this. You play a vital role of society and please don't close your doors. Please. Yeah. But I think there's so much disconnect out there between people's relationship between them and their food. Yeah. Like, you know, how many people, if I just walked into, walked into town and I held this up and said, tell me the entire growing process of this from start to plant finish, you know, with rough numbers open the freezer door open plastic put in boiling water that's exactly right (laughs) you know where did this come from right kind of plant does this grow on right people just they don't know yeah and i think like you said with the proliferation you know with social media there's all kinds of fun negative things that happen there including in like some misinformation and scary stuff about ag in general right tons of fun stuff yeah you know but you know it's 
that is a cool thing to see people's relationship being gained. You know, everything in this world revolves around different relationships. It's your relationships with your family, with your God, with your community, with anything. So it's like, well, why do you have to only do that with other folks? Mm. You know, it's like, okay, here's my relationship with my ground. You know, mm. you get, people goof around. I go wearing barefoot all the time, right? You know, if it, be, being a hippie. We talk about grounding. I know, I love going grounding. Got but airing up a wall. It's fun. So I, I coach all my kids in baseball, and I coach barefoot. I do not wear shoes on the baseball field and get a lot of odd looks, and it's fun like that. Number one, I keep my flip-flops in the dugout to throw at players that are getting out of line. Right. And <laughs> number two, it just feels good, man, and I feel connected. I feel, I don't know, like I'm plugged into a charger, if that's a weird way of saying it, you know. But it's um, stuff like that is I'm living in a relationship with the world around me, yeah. you know, trying to take it in as much as possible. To not just take it in visually. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. And again, you know, the tree hair stuff, people make fun of being kind of hippie. It's like, you know, go take a nap on the side of a hill and just immerse yourself in that sound yeah. and that feeling and that, you know, make it tactile, you sure. know, and have a relationship with it. it. It changes things. It changes, I don't know, change my outlook. Let's sure. Put it that way. 